Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to read the entire chapter. More on the series of fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You know, they were called, uh, my Bob's note here, you know, they were called the commandments for a reason. They, they weren't called the ten suggestions, you know. I mean, and if a law has no penalty, it's a suggestion. And what does it say? Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live. For to do them that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Verse 2. Ye shall not, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. In other words, don't add and don't subtract. Don't add to it and don't take away. Uh, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep, keep, the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now, is there another witness to doing this in the New Testament? Uh, yeah. Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 through 19. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Now, how can it be the root and the offspring of David? Well, Christ created everything. He created the heaven, the earth, Adam and Eve. So, he's the root. And yet, by the flesh, he was the offspring of David. So, he says, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let her that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Listen carefully. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book so what did the uh, what is the Babylonian Talmud oral traditions I guess you could technically say they're adding to this book I don't know maybe maybe not if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, oh boy, here comes the punchline, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So when people tell you eternal security, no matter what you do, once you do a sinner's prayer, you know, you're, you're saved, that's it. Nothing you can do can prevent God from keeping you, you know, from entering the kingdom. Well, you know, there's a few things Jesus said. He's, he says, if anybody takes away the words from the pro uh, this book of prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city. So, you don't want to do that. Christ 
uh, also said that if you deny, deny him before men, that he would deny you before the Father. He also said that if you take the mark of the beast, well, lake of fire. I mean, oh, and there's a, uh, I saw, somebody sent me a video or a link. Somebody sent a link on one of my videos that showed Donald Trump saying that uh, they need to implement the, uh, the RFID chip for a, uh, to be able to identify legal from illegal citizens in this country. Isn't that interesting? They're going to use illegal immigration to probably chip us, possibly. I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be a prophet. But, uh, I mean, what people are not for stopping illegal immigration? I mean, virtually everybody's against it. The only people that are not against it are politicians and the, um, the tribe, if you catch my drift. They're the only ones that are for, you know, immigration. So, uh, and, but, you know, people, let me tell you something. Your, um, most of your government IDs, driver's licenses, and passports have already got a chip in them. And these new ATM cards and credit cards, they also have chips in them. What happens when they decide to merge them? Well, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the chip or something. You know, I, I don't, I'm not saying that's definitely 100% the mark, but I tell you what, I believe that's what the Lord showed me back in 1990 or 1991 when I asked for the show, show me what it was. And uh, it's come a long way since then. But, you know, it could be something different. But I'll tell you what, it sure, sure would fit the bill. All right, chap, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Let's go back. So, in verse 2, warned you not to add to the word and not to take away from the word, uh, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Verse 3, your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Now, B-A-A-L, Baal or Baal, was a generic name for God. But it became so associated with Satanism that the God of, in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, said, don't call me that by that name anymore. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But... Ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. And you know what? The Bible is a book of the law. Harvard University and Yale were originally founded as Bible colleges. And their law schools were Bible law. Book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You know, when you stole from your neighbor, you had to pay him back with um, and a penalty. Murderers were to be put to death. I mean, you know, now Harvard, which was started as a, as a Christian Bible college, now has a kosher tribe member as a president. And they teach classes on anal sex. What does the Bible say to do about um, people that perform anal sex? Well, uh, it says to stone them. And it's not talking about some great, uh, some great weed from Colombia, if you know what I mean. So, 
Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, now this is Moses speaking, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Now that word nations is sometimes translated as nations, other times it's translated as Gentiles, depending upon the context. And what's wisdom? Keeping, knowing the law and keeping it. I mean, let's face it. Uh, if, if the law could save people, we wouldn't have need, needed Christ. But God demands obedience. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things, that we may call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. See, it was, it was our ancestors' duty to teach us about God and his laws. But we failed horribly. 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near, and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire. Isn't that what this series is all about? The fire? And ye came near, and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. So there's not only darkness, there's thick darkness. What's thick darkness? Uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says darkness that can be touched. In Exodus 10, 21, we read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. How can you feel darkness? I mean, that's, oof. In Zephaniah chapter 1, in verse 14, we read, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasten greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath. See, this is for the unbelievers. Sometimes the Bible talks to believers. Sometimes it warns unbelievers. And that's what this is. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastedness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet. Doesn't uh, Paul say that uh, we'll be changed at the last trump. And in Revelation, there's seven trumps. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Back to Deuteronomy. Uh, let's see. Verse 12. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice, and he declared unto you his covenant. Now, what's a covenant? It's a promise, people. Uh, 
you do this and I'll do that. It's like sort of like a contract. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Ah, you do this and I'll do that. Which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. And people will tell you that Paul is a false apostle. I don't think so. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts. What's an epistle? A letter. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Forasmuch as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 14. And the Lord committed me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no matter of similitude on that day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of fire lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them. And people, there are people that worship the sun, the moon, the stars, and the host of heaven, which could mean either the stars in the sky or the fallen angels. Even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations unto the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. The iron furnace. Remember in the book of Daniel, it talks about the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the kingdom that's going to be uh, the ten toes, part of iron and part of clay. Well, it likens the iron to Egypt. And Egypt was just full of false gods and evil and wickedness. Matter of fact, what does the Bible say about Sodom and Egypt? Now, in Revelation 11, it talks about the two witnesses of God, one of which is going to be Elijah. And in verse 6, it says, These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, 
and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless, bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And people will say, oh, that's Rome. It says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, where was the Lord crucified? The Lord was crucified in Jerusalem. Okay? Jerusalem. He wasn't crucified in Rome. And when people try to tell you that it was Rome that killed Jesus, well, I tell you what, I don't think so. Read, uh, well, let's take a look. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Oh, that's right. This is Paul. This is why they hate Paul. 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2. Thessalonia was a city in Greece. Chapter 2, verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye have also suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of... It starts with a J and rhymes with news. Um, they're starting to censor videos by um, words. So uh, just remember, it starts with a J and, and rhymes with news, uh, hereafter known as the tribe even as they have of the tribe, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Wow. When did God send prophets to Rome? No. No. Back to Deuteronomy Chapter 4, verse 20. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes. Now this is Moses speaking and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, and ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt begat children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. You know, people, you got a choice. Be obedient, love the Lord, 
and prolong your days or be rebellious and disobedient and be destroyed? Gee, that's a tough choice, huh? Verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. People, this prophecy right now is happening in Europe and America. Verse 28. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Where else do we read about this? How about Revelation chapter 13, verse 11? And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Oh yeah, looks like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, people. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. That they should make an image to the beast. That's an idol, people. An idol. That they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And I t tr truly believe in my heart that there is going to be a remnant of the tribe who are not of the corrupted seed, that they're going to look at this and say, we, we can't worship an idol. We can't worship an image. Why, that's in the Ten Commandments, which Moses gave us. And I believe in that day, many of them are going to realize that Christ was indeed the promised Messiah and that they were misled by the Revelation 2.9, uh, well, the false tribe. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You know, people, television, isn't that an image of the beast? And doesn't it speak? I don't know. It seems kind of, I don't know. Just a thought. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let, he, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Why is it at the number of a man? Adam was created on the sixth day, people. Think about that. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. And you know, if it was a microchip that had electronic encoding into it, they could encode 666 into it. You couldn't see it. You know, people are... Uh, chick tracks a number of years ago were showing people with barcodes on their heads with 666. I don't think so. The devil's not that stupid. 
I mean, come on, people. You know, I took computer programming in college a long time ago. I took COBOL and assembler language. And, you know, if you program 666 in code, you wouldn't know it unless you had a, you know, unless you could read code. So, let's see. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to close this out. Verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if thou, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. All right, in Matthew 22, those of you that have been listening to me for a while, you, you know this one by heart probably by now. Matthew 22, 30, 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, he was a doctor of the law, Bible law. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, oh, you see, this doctor of the law is trying to trick Jesus. So he says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Didn't we just read that in Deuteronomy? Yeah. Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Back to Ver, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 29. But if, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. You know, people, when you love God more than your sin, and you want him more than anything in this world, you'll find him. He'll find you. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. People, all this stuff, Moses, Moses knew to an extent what we're going to be what we're going to be facing shortly. When thou art in trouble, tribulation, trouble, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, the end times. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice. See, the Lord demands obedience. And if you believe in obedience, the churches will curse you saying, oh, you believe in lordship salvation. You're trying to earn your salvation by being obedient. You know what? Those are the people, well, let's take a look. There's a verse in the Bible where it talks about um, lasciviousness. Ah, I had to find it. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They take grace and turn it into a license 
to sin. That's what lasciviousness means. Wickedness. Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which ye swear unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing, or hath been heard like it. Do ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard, and live? Or hath God assuaged to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. And upon the earth he showed thee his great fire. And thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, Therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art to bring thee in to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not, and hated him not in times past and that fleeing unto one of these cities might live. Now, what are they talking about? Let's say you had a, a, a wood a wood cutting business. You're selling timber or whatever, and, and your neighbor and you are good friends, and you have both have axes, and you're cutting down trees. And the axe head, when you're cutting wood next to him, your axe head flies off your handle, hits him in the skull, and kills him. You didn't try to kill him, but you did. You killed this man. Because of your actions, this man is dead. Technically, you slayed a man. And that's what they're talking about. That the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not. See, you didn't hate this guy. You didn't try to kill him. It was an accident. But any one of this man's uh, who's killed... Any one of his uh, relatives could say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and kill you, even though it was an accident. But that's why the, they, you could flee to one of these cities. And what you would do is you would, when you went to the city, you'd plead your case. And then, you know, your witnesses would say, oh, yeah, those guys, they were friends. They'd worked together for many years you know, the axe head much, must have slipped and killed him by accident. You know, they loved each other. They wouldn't, he wouldn't, neither one of them would have killed each other. You know, and then the elders of the city say, okay, well, you've got sanctuary here. And as long as the man did not leave that city, um, the family of the man that was killed would not be able to, to kill him without penalty. He was safe. But uh, if, that's if he could flee to that sanctuary city. If he didn't make it to the sanctuary city and the, the man's relatives caught up with the man and killed him, they were guiltless. So you had to have faith in the Lord that the Lord would 
prosper your journey. So, all right, so sanctuary cities for 43. Namely, Bezer in the wilderness in the plain country of the Reubenites and Ramoth and Gilead of the Gadites and Golan in Bashan of the Manassites. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Hezbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote after they were come forth out of Egypt. And they possessed his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan. I think Og was one of the giants. And the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. From A-R-O-E-R, -E which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. Hermon is mentioned in the Book of Enoch. I'm I'm not a big fan of the Book of Enoch. Parts of it sounds like it's real. Other parts, eh, I don't know. Do I think it's scripture? I don't know. I, I've got mixed emotions about Enoch. I really do. And if you're going to read Enoch, read the book uh, translated by Charles, because there's uh, at least two books of Enoch, and one of them, one of them's a total fake. Um, but it mentions that Herm Herman, Mount Hermon, was the place where the uh, fallen angels made a, uh, a, uh, a promise to each other that they would, uh, well, Genesis 6, people. If you don't know what happened in Genesis 6, check out my playlist, uh, The Angels That Sinned. And uh, also, I've got another playlist on uh, God's covenant with Abraham. Very, very uh, good study. Now, I mean, I'm not just patting myself on the back. I mean, I, I spent many hours doing research and putting it together. Uh, from uh, I had some help, but I mean, a lot of it was from scratch. I mean, I just went and, you know, uh, people that try to tell you that anybody from Adam could be saved, Eh, I don't think so. Um, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Isaac had two sons, Jacob Israel and Esau. And in Malachi 1, God said he hated Esau. Hated Esau. Hated Esau. I mean, come on. And yeah, the blacks will tell us that uh, white people are Esau. Well, that's, that's yeah. What can I tell you? All right. Uh, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon, and all the plain on this side, Jordan eastward, even unto the Sea of the Plain, under the springs of Pisgah. All right, people, that's it. Uh, this is the end. Um, I don't remember what part this is, but it's. I'll have to look it up. And I'll mark it accordingly, and I'll put it on the fire playlist. So... But uh, I've got some, also, I've got a study on Elijah. It's an hour and 45 minutes long, how he's going to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation that confronts the beast, how he brings fire from the sky, down from the sky and confronts the false prophet. Um, really, it's, it's, it's a fairly decent study. Um, I know I'm not the best speaker, you know. I'm 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 an amateur, you know. You, you professionals get paid, and I do this voluntarily, so that makes me an amateur. You know, if I was getting paid by a church, that I guess that would make me a professional. You know, the um, the the people on TBN, uh, they're professionals, I guess you could say, but. Uh, you know, what can I tell you? All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.